Welcome to Noodles of the World. My name is Mac. I'll be your server. Are we a party of one? No, I'm meeting some friends. They're late. Mm Mm-hmm. Something to snack on while you wait? Perhaps some delicious noodles. Uh, That's uh, using your uh, noodle, sir. Uh, This is uh, noodles of the world, after all. (laughs) Uh, But you're going to need to be way more specific. What kind of noodles would you like, exactly? Um, do you have any long noodles? Uh, Uh... We have spaghetti, linguine, fettuccini, bucatini, tripolini, tagliolini, pappardelli, lasagnette. We have a udon, lo mein, ramen, rice noodles, stick or a thread, and a cellophane noodles, also known as a glass noodles. Wow. Maybe I'll start with something a little less slurpy. Do you have any noodles in fun shapes? We have spirals, farfalli, a.k.a. bow ties, radiotori, capaletti, campagnelle, cavetapi, rotelli, otherwise known as wheels, cavetelli, gimelli. Shall I go on? Oh, I can't decide. Can I get some bow ties, wheels, and spirals? Absolutely not. One cannot simply mix noodles. For one thing, they boil for a different lengths of time. And secondly, each shape has its own specific purpose. Really? I thought the purpose was to fill me up. No! Each pasta shape is meant to be perfectly paired with its sauce. You don't put heavy sauce on a thin noodle. It would be crushed under its own weight. And no thin sauce on a wide noodle. It would slip... Right off, not to mention the cheese sauces. Oh, cheese. I'd love some noodles with cheese, please. Very well. Menegotti, tortellini, ravioli, rotini, conchiglie. Psst. Hey, kid, can you help me out? What's your favorite noodle and cheese? Go ahead, shout it out. Ah, popular choice. One mac and cheese coming right up. Thanks. But hey... Did you know there were so many types of noodles to choose from? What are noodles exactly? Where do they come from? And is pasta healthy? It's time for another whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science? Or history? Listen up! Everyone, we make smarting lots of fun on Who Smarted? All right, Smarty Pants, see if you can guess how many different types of noodles there are. Over 100? Over 1,000? How about a million? If you said over 1,000, you're right. And that's a lot of pasta. And whether it's long strands, shells, elbows, or funny shapes, the waiter was right. Each shape has its own specific purpose. Think about lasagna. Mmm. Lasagna noodles are wide and sturdy to hold up to all those layers of sauce, meat, and cheese. Some noodles act as a platform for sauce, while others, like ravioli, trap ingredients inside of them. Some noodles, like ziti, penny, or elbows, have holes so sauce can fill it up. Yum. While others, like shells or manicotti, can be individually stuffed with cheese. Here's a question for you. What kind of noodle goes best in soup? As you probably know, most noodles start out dry and hard and only get softer when they're combined with another ingredient. Do you know what that ingredient is? That's right, hot water. Noodles absorb hot water, which means a noodle plunked into a bowl of hot soup will absorb it. But since soup is meant to be liquid, what kind of noodles can you put in soup that won't soak it all up? Did you guess smaller noodles? Pastas shaped like rice, tiny pearls, or letters of the alphabet are perfect for keeping your soup soupy. So how do they make so many shapes? Simple. Pasta dough is loaded into a machine called a pasta extruder and squeezed out like toothpaste through what's known as a dye. And a die is just a cutout of whatever shape you want the pasta to be, just like a cookie mold. 
The more times you run the dough through the machine, the longer and thinner you can make it. Ah. But there's more to noodle variety than just shape. To find out more, let's step into the kitchen. Hey, Bambino, who are you and what are you doing in my kitchen? Uh, my friends and I were hoping you could tell us what makes a noodle a noodle. Ah, Bambino, that's simple. Uh, two ingredients, a uh, water and something dry to mix into a dough. That's what goes into the dried noodles you find in a cardboard box at the supermarket. If you want fresh pasta, which is soft and requires less cooking time, you're gonna need an egg. Which is why fresh pasta, it needs to be refrigerated. There are three main varieties of noodles. Each one uses a different dry ingredient for its dough. The first one is flour. Noodles like spaghetti, macaroni, and what you find in an Italian restaurant are typically made from wheat flour. Manja, manja. And next, if you've ever had noodles from Southeast Asia, like uh, Vietnamese pho or uh, pad thai, uh, those are made from water and rice starch. That's two. Uh, the third type of a noodle is one that is not made up of wheat or rice. Thanks, Chef. That really narrows it down. That could be anything. Uh, not anything. It has to be a food, and it has to make a powder when it's all ground up. But otherwise, yes, it could be anything. Uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, almonds, coconut, or uh, even beans. Check out this gnocchi. It's made from potato dough, but it still counts as a pasta. Awesome! But do you know how old they are? Old? Not old. Everything is made fresh here. Sorry, Chef. I didn't mean your noodles. I meant all noodles. Do you know how long noodles have been around? What about you, kid? Was it 1895, the year that peanut butter was invented? The 1920s when modern ovens were widely used? Or roughly 4,000 years ago? Well, smarty pants, noodles can be traced back to a time long before peanut butter and ovens, as scientists have discovered a bowl of noodles dating back 4,000 years. It's like the world's oldest leftovers. I don't believe in the leftovers. A pasta should be eaten right after it's cooked. Mwah! Everyone has their preference. So, where do you think noodles originated? You might be surprised, because the majority of pasta that's eaten in America is Italian-style pasta, typically made from ground-up wheat flour called semolina. And while there are records of noodles in Italy and several other countries from thousands of years ago, the oldest known record of noodles, including those 4,000-year-old noodles, were discovered in China. Now, no one can say for sure if China invented the noodle and that it was their recipe that spread around the world, or if several regions developed the same yummy idea independently. But for now, sorry Italy, China has the 4,000-year-old proof. Of course, modern ovens weren't around 4,000 years ago. So, how did they cook noodles? Simple the same way we do today. Do you know what that method is called? Whether it was 4,000 years ago or today, noodles are prepared by... Boiling. Now, who's this in my kitchen? Oh, this is my friend Marie. She's a food scientist. She's meeting me here for lunch to explain the science behind making noodles. Science? Uh, Noodles are art. Eh, science. Art. Don't get overheated, chef. We all know you're a true pasta artiste, but for an accurate breakdown of what happens when raw noodles meet boiling water, that's science. Unless you want to explain the chemistry. Chemistry? That's all you, Marie. Okay, so you already know the key to transforming a raw doughy noodle 
or hard dry noodle into an edible meal is by submerging it in boiling water. Boiling water guarantees your noodle will not turn to mush because it conditions the outside of the noodle. Many foods would dissolve in water, but because noodles are made up of both proteins and carbohydrates, the boiling water softens and cooks the noodle. The carbohydrates get sticky and soft, while the proteins form a web around them, keeping them contained. Science at its finest. Americans each eat about 15 and a half pounds of noodles a year. So what is it that makes us all love these long strands, shells, and elbows so much? Is it your belly? Yes. Or your brain? Yes. What about you, smarty pants? Why do you crave mac and cheese and feel comforted after eating it? That was so good. Is it because of your belly? Or your brain? Got your answer? Go ahead. Shout it out. If you said belly, you're right. And if you said brain, you're also right. The reason you feel good about eating noodles is because of all the carbs. Huh? Carbs is short for carbohydrates, which are a kind of nutrient found in certain foods. Uh. Examples of carbohydrates include sugars, like what you find in fruit or table sugar, and starches, like rice, potatoes, and wheat. And they all give you energy. That's why marathon runners eat bowls of pasta the night before a race. I'm here for my pre-race carbs. And now who is in my kitchen? Oh, this is my other friend. He's a triathlete running a race tomorrow. Now, some of you might be wondering, if carbs give you energy, why not eat spaghetti all the time then? I see nothing wrong with that. So, should you eat pasta all the time? The answer, right after this quick break. Now back to who's smarted. So, should you eat pasta all the time? The answer is no. No! But also, maybe. Huh? Marie? When eaten in moderation, and as part of a balanced diet, along with veggies, fruits, and proteins, pasta can absolutely be part of a healthy diet. However, there are three things to consider. One, portion size. Don't overdo it. Two, what are you topping your pasta with? Pass the parmesan, please. Too much cheese, butter, or creamy sauce can turn healthy pasta into not so much. Three, make sure your noodles come from whole grains. Whole grain is a kernel in the flour that makes the dough, that makes the noodles, that make your tummy happy. Whole grains have lots of fiber, which is both filling and good for you. If you eat pasta with just regular flour, you're left with refined noodles, which taste great and have a great texture, but don't pack a nutritional punch. Whole grain pasta for me, please. But wait, you said noodles also satisfy your brain. Marie? Some parts of carbohydrates turn into serotonin, a hormone that sends feel-good, happy messages to your brain. However... To get the best that noodles have to offer, you should not only eat balanced meals, but also have a balanced routine. Your brain feels best when you move your body around a lot throughout the day and get plenty of sleep. Excuse me, I will show you to your table now. You'll find pad thai, Korean japchi, laksa with haki and noodles, fusilli, and a lasagna. That sounds amazing, but we didn't order all that. A compliments of the chef. As long as you stay out of my kitchen. Mamma mia. Special shout out to Ali, Emma, and Ava, listening in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. Thanks so much for listening to Who Smarted. This episode, Noodles, was written by Jenna Hoban and voiced by Brandon Bayless, Taya Garland, Charlotte Cohn, Jason Williams, and Jerry Colbert. Additional voices, technical direction, and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Noodles Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez. Lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production.